Hey guys, we are well into 2024, but I still want to talk to you guys about anime that aired in 2023 that I really appreciate. This is my top 10 video with an honorable mention. There was so much anime that came out this year, so many games that came out this year that I could not get to everything. Side note here, I will only be talking about anime that were completed in 2023, so this is not going to count rollovers into 2024, such as Free Ren and The Apothecary Diaries. While they're great, I'm gonna save them for next year so that I can watch them in full. There's still anime on my list from 2023 that I have not gotten to. Out of the shows that I did watch, here are the top 10 plus an honorable mention. Now the honorable mention goes directly to the Megumin spinoff anime from Konosuba. Konosuba, an explosion on this wonderful world. Megumin is my favorite character from Konosuba and I just love the comedy from that series. And there's a lot more lore than you would think from a comedy isekai series. And I just loved going back and seeing Megumin's past and why she's so obsessed with explosion magic and seeing her academy years. I hope they do more spinoffs of Konosuba. I've really come to love the universe and I cannot wait for season three airing later this year. Number 10 on the list goes to Reborn as a Vending Machine and Now I Wonder the Dungeon. These days I have to look at the name while I say it because they're, they're too long these days. Now with Isekai, I am one of those people that admittedly gets a little bit bored of certain Isekai and I, I'm hesitant to jump in unless the premise or the title is extremely weird. Like we've seen people be reincarnated as spiders and slimes and swords. And now we have someone reincarnated as a vending machine. And it's just so funny because this person uses his knowledge of modern Japan in this fantasy world. And the characters in this fantasy world, they are just like amazed by this technology. The main character Lamis bring, like, literally picks up this vending machine and brings it to her little you know, isekai fantasy town that has no idea about this technology. And this vending machine is able to grow and, and sell more things and change into different kinds of vending machines in Japan that, that you might have seen in Japan. It's definitely not going to do it for everyone, but I think it's creative enough and the jokes are good enough that I, I was like, genuinely surprised surprised how good this was given how silly the premise is. The next one, number nine, is Onimai, I'm Now Your Sister. Now, <laughs> before you click away, I think the thing that I liked about this series, as strange as it was sometimes, admittedly, um, is the theme of like just accepting yourself for who you are, who you're becoming. This character, Mahiro, is kind of a, a shut-in. He hasn't left home in a long time. And because of his, one of his sister's weird experiments, he turns into a girl and he goes through life as a girl for several weeks and realizes like all the, the differences. Like he really gets into it, like his first period, for example. And throughout the series, he kind of starts to like accept the feminine sides of himself. And he's starting to like life as a girl. The art style is fantastic. It's, it's just got this like pastel color palette that I love. It's a little bit weird. I recommend it if, if you're kind of a fan of things like Oremo or A Sister's All You Need. If you can handle those series, you can definitely handle this one. Next on my list is my clueless first friend. Um, this follows a young character by the name of Akane Nishimura, and she kind of has this like dark look to her, almost this like unfriendly aura, even though I find her very cute. And so people in her elementary school make fun of her. They call her like a ghost or a demon and they think that she's gonna haunt them or curse them, but she makes a very clueless friend who just treats her like a human and, and treats her like the girl she deserves to be treated as. And this clueless first friend, as naive as he is, as maybe overly optimistic as he is, you just can't help but, but love him for giving Nishimura a, a chance to actually make a friend. Now obviously with it being elementary school, the romance is not too serious. It's definitely this puppy dog love kind of thing, but it, the romance parts of it aside, it's more for me like about their friendship. Just the innocence of it all, the innocence of, of the characters, the optimistic worldview that the boy character Tayo has. It's it, it gets contagious. The next show is chilling in my 30s after getting fired from the Demon King's party which I did not expect this to be that great. And then it ended up, so really the reason why I picked this up is because back in July, I turned 
30 in 2023 so shout out to 1993 babies and i was like well this anime is coming out called chilling in my 30s after getting fired from the it just seems like i'm supposed to watch this anime so i watched the first couple episodes and i really do like the main character daryl it's just about this guy who who had it all in the demon's king party and then he got kicked out and just decides to live a quiet normal life but of course in fantasy settings that's not always going to happen so it becomes this like him trying to protect his calm slow life like he's accepted getting kicked out and, and getting married and having a child and like wanting to protect that and i don't know it's just it's it's not particularly special it's just a nice 12 13 episode watch and not too much crazy conflict either so i recommend it if you just need something super super chill because it's literally the name of the anime it's very chill the next series number six which I have to read again, <laughs> saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement. Um, this anime follows about a high school aged girl who can actually go back and forth from where she gets isekai and Japan. And so just like in Vending Machine, she uses her knowledge of modern Japan to help her out in the fantasy world. And she opens up a store selling things that she brings from Japan, like technology and food and she brings gold back to Japan from this isekai world and exchanges it for yen and puts that towards her retirement. And, and that's the show. It's, it is for fans of people that are, are fans of Gate because that's kind of a mix of like modern weaponry and uh, fantasy weaponry. And, and this has those elements for sure. But as far as Isekai goes, it's actually a lot more special one than I expected. If you're feeling a little burnt out from Isekai, I think maybe give this a try. I do like the fact that she can go back and forth between worlds, which is not something super common uh, in Isekai. And, and if it is, it's it's not like every episode it happens. It's a very rare thing, whereas she can basically on demand go back to Japan and, and get things and bring them into this world. I just found it fascinating. Getting into the top five, Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible. This is just a cute romance story between a boy and a girl in high school where Kubo, kind of on the surface, she looks a little shy, looks a little helpless as a cute girl, but she is, okay, Swifties will know what I'm talking about. She is literally what the song Mastermind is about. She, she is a mastermind because she really tries to get this guy to like her. And she's very in a very teasy way as well. The main guy character, uh, Junta Shiraishi, sh he is like, invisible to other people, kind of like Kuroko no Basuke levels where like they just don't notice that he's there even though he is. It's kind of this supernatural thing in the show, but Kubo always knows that he's there, always recognizes him. And, and for that, they, they become friends and, and they just get along. It's just a cute little slice of life high school romance story that is just so fluffy. I think you'll like it if you need something cute. Number four is possibly one of the most, if not the most popular anime last year, uh, other than ones that are rerunning, Oshinoko. Now Oshinoko, the manga I started reading because it was just plastered all over Japan. And I knew that it was gonna get an anime. I knew that this was like a manga that had to get an adaptation. And I don't want to get too much into it, but the first episode is about 45 minutes long to an hour long. And they have to do it this way to draw you into what the story is truly about. But what I can tell you is that Ai Hoshino is one of Japan's most popular idols. Um, she goes to the doctor and tells her, her, her doctor, who happens to be a fan of her work, ha happens to be a fan of her music, finds out she is, is pregnant and has to, to deal with like hiding that from the media and, and the press because she's so famous. Um, fortunately, you know, she does safely give birth to these children and she tries to balance her idol life while having this ch these children. But the story is not necessarily about any of that. And I think it would be unfair to you to, to continue telling you what happens in the story. You're just gonna have to take it from there. Animation wise, it's, it's really good to see a, a, a drama like this, like not necessarily a battle shown and get such good animation and get love from the anime community. It's nice to, to see something a little bit different, take the number one spot last year. And naturally with almost any idol anime, it deals with like how dark that industry can be or the entertainment industry in general can be, which is a running theme and a lot of anime that people like. So if you're into that, 
hey, Oshinoko. Number three, it has to go to the um, Atelier Ryza animation. I'm a huge fan of the games and was totally stoked to find out that it was getting an animation and it follows the game really closely. Uh, the character voice actors are uh, the same ones in the anime that they are from the game. It's so beautifully animated too. I just love seeing these characters not in game models and they take their time with it. The, the, the anime really takes its time. It doesn't feel very rushed and for a video game anime adaptation, which in the past has gone very wrong uh, with anime, it's pretty great. As a big Ryza fan, I was so stoked about the anime. I watched it um, in Japanese, so I'm with Japanese subtitles, so not. I can't really comment on how maybe the uh, subtitling for the English localization was, but from what I could tell, if you're a Ryza fan, it's great. If you haven't yet do dove into Ryza, it might be a little bit hard to get into. I think it assumes that maybe the, the, the person watching has played the games. I'm not completely sure, but I, I may, maybe give it a try if you like fantasy with, with, with really cr super creative characters, amazingly creative characters. It's fun. And R Ryza and all of her friends. Every, everyone is such a good character. Number two goes to uh, my love story with Yamada at level 999. This one took me by surprise because shoujo, I, I don't really know if they consider it shoujo or seinen because it does deal with college character romance. Um, shoujo protagonists, it's hard for me to, to like them sometimes. I'm not really all for like the damsel in distress kind of, of trope and sometimes I don't like how overly nice shoujo characters are or uh, there's just something fake sometimes about shoujo characters to me or like the helplessness of, of some shoujo characters but I did not get those vibes at all from Yamada-kun at level 999. This anime follows um, a girl who j had just got dumped and she had just gotten into a video game because of her past partner but then gets dumped and, and doesn't really know what to do with the game anymore p p playing it just kind of like reminds her of him but then she comes across a pro gamer that plays this that is a pro gamer in this title and it's, it's about their love story and how like she's a little bit quirky and a little bit dumb and a little bit loud and he's like more quiet and reserved. And I, I like this chemistry with characters. And I also appreciate the fact that it's not a, it's not a wild goose chase the whole time. Like it gets to the point. It's not like, oh, does he like me? I don't know. Or does she like me? I don't know. Like it, it's more about their actual relationship than them trying to chase each other and like miscommunication. Like I do not have time for that. Not to mention that I also appreciate that it is college age characters, it's not uh, kids, it's not high schoolers like we get with a lot of romance anime, so I, I appreciate that about it. So that plus the gaming and otaku elements just wrapped up together make it my favorite romance of the year, easily. My number one anime of the year goes to 16-bit sensation which is such a love story to otaku, to Akihabara, which is the otaku district of Tokyo. Um, it's a love story to visual novel enjoyers, and it follows a girl named Konoha Akisato. She works at a video game company as a character designer, but she kind of does background characters, and her dream is to do like main characters, and she's so talented, but she just doesn't get this chance in this company. And one day she goes into this old mysterious video game store and she buys some games and she opens up a box and she gets sent back in time to the time when this old visual novel was released. So I think the first er, the first year that she goes back to is 1992. And she goes back to Akihabara of 1992 and it's really cool to see the differences of Akihabara then, or I think it was more about the technology in Akihabara then, whereas now it's more of an otaku town. And she gets her chance to work at a video game company in 1992. Now, there's a lot of going back and forth um, due to certain reasons. There's a lot of going back and forth from 2023 Akihabara and the 1990s Akihabara. So there's different like eras of the, of the 90s and early 2000s that she gets to experience uh, in Japan and what otaku culture was like back in the day. And so there's just a lot of mystery in this show, a lot of time travel, which can get uh, but pretty complicated really fast. But I think the way the series is, is laid out, it, it's, it, to me, it's less about the sci-fi of it all and more about the love letter to otaku them that I like. And I just love Konoha Akisato as a character so much. She loves me shoujo games, she loves cute anime girls, and I just felt like I related to her on so many levels. Every single week, this show was a joy. 
Animation wise, it is nothing to gawk at, but I do like Konoha as a character design. If you have any kind of uh, appreciation for Akihabara and Otakunam, this is one that I think, or, or even like computer, uh, computers and video game design, video game development, you will really appreciate this show. There's so many elements to it that so many people would love. So please give it a try. It really went under the radar this past year. I talked to so many people at um, Ichiban Con that I went to a couple weeks ago about it and they didn't even realize that, that, that maybe it just like completely missed their watch list. Like, it's on Crunchyroll. It's on there. And there you have it guys. My top 10 anime of 2023. What anime did you guys like last year? Let me know what I missed. There is so much anime that I know I have to go back and watch. Don't forget to like the video if you like it and uh, um, there's, I just need to go watch more anime. There's too much. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in future videos. Bye!